What we're going to look at here is the uh, is the Badger Anthem 155. Now this is probably one of the most um, popular airbrushes I would imagine for, for all sorts of different applications. I know guys that use it for uh, mural work, um, custom painting, models. It's a really good all-rounder. He uses uh, one needle and one nozzle uh, configuration, so that'll that'll give you a hairline to a three-inch uh, spray. Um, and it's bottle feed, and it's just uh, it's just great for all sorts of applications. So this really is a it really is probably one of the number one all-rounders you can get. So let's uh, just find out what you get in the set, and I'll just talk you through uh, the actual parts of the airbrush, stripping it down, putting it back together again. Okay, well first off in the set you just get this basic uh, uh, leaflet, really. Just gives you some instructions on how to use the airbrush, uh, some quick maintenance tips, and uh, basically a, a parts list uh, with uh, showing you the components, and uh, just sort of helps you, helps you out, um, just explaining what the airbrush suitable for etc so we'll go on to the airbrush now and we'll just have a look at the components right here obviously here we've got the uh, the anthem 155 um, I'll go through that in a in a second braided air hose you get that's badger fitting to your compressor fit in there it says it's quality hose as well this is this is actually braided and we get two jars this is a spare jar and you actually get the jar that you actually attach to the airbrush um, I do like these plastic fittings here, it doesn't uh, score the inside of your airbrush at all um, and they're, everything's solvent resistant so you don't need to worry about anything getting damaged so that's it basically so what we'll do now is we'll just run through the airbrush itself and uh, we'll strip it down and put it back together again right okay this is the uh, Anthem 155 um, now uh, most uh, Badger airbrushes now come with this uh, rubber protective cap so we can just take that straight off it simply uh, just protects the front of the airbrush when it's in the workshop uh, but as soon as you start to use the airbrush just you need to put that to one side um, now this is a double action airbrush down for air back for paint so there's um, you can you can vary the amount of paint you want to, you've got complete control on this uh, with this airbrush um, this is the sort of ultimate design of airbrush um, you know you're not sort of uh, limited to um, like you are with a single action airbrush so uh, well, what we'll do is I'll just go through uh, the various components of this and then we'll, we'll strip it down so what we've got here is actually we've got this uh, cutaway handle which is a nice design you can get any blocks at the at the business end of the airbrush you simply pull this back and it can help flush out any any paint particles um, that way you don't have to actually take the handle off to get to anything um, it's cut away at the back as well so if you do want to pull the needle back you simply pull it out like that that's that's a good idea as well because it is it's easy to take the handle off it's a little bit of a pain if you need to take it off all the time so I do like that design and um, it's got a very smooth trigger action um, you can adjust the uh, the spring tension which I'll show you how to do later um, it's very comfortable airbrush to use. Uh, as I said, uh, one needle does everything from fine lines to about three inches spray pattern. So what you've got is an excellent, uh, an excellent all-rounder. Um, your paint jar obviously, obviously uh, fits in the bottom there, and you're good to go there for for as long as the paint lasts basically you can get different size jars so excellent for murals uh, largest work or or detail work so what we'll do now is we'll uh, we'll just strip it down and put it back together again Okay, first of all, what you'll want to do is um, we'll just take the handle off. Put that to one side. Undo the chucking nut. I'll just press down the trigger, just keeps everything out of the way of the needle. And I'm just going to, as I'm sort of slightly twisting it just to free it up, I'm just going to pull it straight out of the uh, airbrush body. Now that's the needle removed. Now we, what we can do is uh, 
take the needle chuck nut off. Now this is the bit that actually helps you tension the uh, tension the trigger spring. Obviously, the further in you go, you've got uh, more tension on the spring, which gives you a tighter a tighter feel to that. It all depends how you personally want to have the um, have the trigger set up. I prefer to have it quite a bit out actually, so there's quite a, um, a light trigger trigger feel. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unscrew that all the way, take that off, and then you can see actually see the uh, that's the trigger spring there. Now I'm going to take that out, unscrew that all the way. And there we go, that's that assembly out. Now you can actually pull the trigger out, which then leaves the back lever in. The back lever is not attached to the uh, to the needle guide, so you just pull that straight out. Now there's a cutaway in the body that helps you drop it in when you put it back together again, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so now we're going to move around to the front and we'll take the nozzle off. Out to the front, uh, we'll just take the uh, nozzle cap off. Very simple. All this is hand tight, as is everything else from from Badger. You just need to uh, do it all finger tight, and that's fine. Okay, and there's the there's the cone uh, the cone nozzle sitting in there into the taper machined in the airbrush body. As I said, one size fits all. This is great for backgrounds or fine lines or whatever. So. Uh, there's no thread on this so it's it's very easy to replace and put back together so now we've done that that is as far as you'd need to go um, there's the air valve in here but there's no need to touch that at all so that's that's it so what we'll do now is we'll put it all back together again okay with the front of the airbrush uh, first things first we'll just drop the, uh, the tip in or the nozzle Helps to have a little bit of lube on that actually just to keep it in place, it stops it falling out while you're putting them together. Got the retainer on now. Just make sure you don't bump that nozzle when you put the uh, retainer on it. Just get your threads nice and lined up. That's it, just do that up finger tight. That's that's good enough now. And then we've got the uh, the nozzle cap straight on the front and that's the front all sorted now. So we'll move round to the back and then we'll uh, put everything back together again in the back area. Right okay that's uh, I'm just going to drop the uh, drop the trigger in now. That can actually go one only go one way so it just sits on top of the air valve. You know when you're on because you can feel it uh, against the spring so now what we're going to do we're just going to drop in the uh, back lever. There we are, it's just fallen against the against the trigger. So that's in place now. You can build this section up actually before you insert it into the body, but I, I prefer to do it this way, then that way I can pull the uh, needle guide back as I'm doing it. So I'll, we'll screw this in. Just make sure you don't tip this up, otherwise you're um, Mate, that's it. Just make sure that needle guide stays stays where it is. Now, what you do with this is you do it up tight. You don't want to adjust this at the same time as the uh, the trigger spring. If you want to adjust that, so you want this to be done tight all the way. That's it. That's nipped up. Now, just make sure that's free. That is free. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the spring in. Just drop the spring over, and then we've got the uh, the adjuster there, and we just screw that in. As far as you want. I'm going about halfway, I suppose. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to press down the trigger. You can see now we've actually got the uh, nothing's binding at all, so that's all free. 
Now we're going to drop the, drop the, actually put the chuck nut on first. Don't do it up at all. And then I'm just going to feed the. There we go. Just feel it go through the needle bearing and touch the end of the nozzle, and that's as far I need to go. And that's that's that done. Now we're just going to screw the handle on. And that should be it. There you have it. Very smooth trigger action on there. Um, and that's the job done. So that's everything put back together again. That was that was dead easy. Um, just make sure you, everything's uh, lined up when you drop the, uh, the back lever in. And uh, you shouldn't have any problems. So there you have the uh, Badger Anthem 155. Um, great all-rounder. Um, very robust. Uh, should last forever. There's, there's very few um, components in there that should wear, if any, um, and it's just so really suitable for anything from uh, large-scale mural work to 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 finer stuff. So it's it's a really good all-rounder, uh, custom paint models, anything really. So I can highly recommend it.